Hey, so I have a ton of kitchen projects that I have been meaning to get done for a while. So I thought I would take you along. I'm sorry if you can hear my robot vacuum. Her name is Rosie after the Jetsons. Uh, but she's running right now because we are multitasking to try and get as much done as possible today. The kids, I have three girls, they are in summer camp, um, different programs. Brooke is doing a crochet summer camp. Chloe is doing a musical theater summer camp. And Lily this week is doing acrylic pouring. So it's very exciting. So the kids are at summer camp. I'm working from home today. So I'm gonna try to get as many kitchen projects done as I possibly can. It's been very, very, very rainy and gross and terrible and muggy and humid and awful in Florida for what seems like forever. Um, basically, since we got back from Tennessee, which had beautiful, gorgeous weather, and it makes me wanna live there, but I digress. So the weather has been insanely weird. How has the weather been where you are? It has been nightmarish here. Can't get anything done in the garden. Um, so, kids your projects. <clears throat> I have two of these giant bags of frozen mixed vegetables that I got at BJ's uh, wholesale. It's kind of like a Sam's Club or a Costco if you're not familiar. And um, so frozen mixed vegetables. I love to have these on hand. We use them in like chicken casserole dumps. We use them in chicken pot pie, uh, just eating them um, on the, as a side dish. So I, I've had these in the freezer for a while. I have two giant bags. Um, they are... I don't even know. Six 12 ounce bags, 72 ounces total, a little over four pounds. So uh, I want to can these up. Um, disclaimer, I do what I think works best for me. This is not a uh, preservation, what's the word? regulated preservation, right? Canning from frozen mixed vegetables, not regulated. So I follow basically the mixed vegetable that is regulated. Um, if you're not comfortable with it, don't do it. I, I don't need a ton of comments that says don't do that. I do what works best for me. You do what works best for you. If you don't wanna do it, don't do it. I have never had a problem. Okay, disclaimer over, because that's the boring stuff. Um, so, I'm gonna can these up. I'm gonna show you how, really stupid easy. Um, if you know how to pressure can, easy. Um, I like having stuff in the freezers. We have two chest freezers, a large one and a smaller one. We also have a stand-up fridge with a freezer in the garage. Um, and that's all well and good, but it's hurricane season. And based on these weather patterns, I feel like I need to get stuff out of the freezers and into jars because I don't wanna lose everything if we have a monstrous hurricane season, which originally they forecasted we did not because of El Nino or El Nino or whichever one was now. Um, but now it looks like conditions are favorable. Um, there's a tropical depression or a tropical storm already out there in the Atlantic making its way this way. So I want to get ahead of that. I want to get ahead of hurricane season and get some stuff moved out of the freezers and into jars so that I don't have to worry if we have no power for an extended amount of time and I lose what's in my freezers because we currently do not have a generator. So if you're giving one away, we will take one. Um, but it is currently not in the budget. So no generator means if we are without power for an extended amount of time, then I will lose everything in my freezers. So we are very careful. Um, we have never had this issue before. Um, we've never lost everything. We've never been without power for an extended period of time. Um, there's a firehouse, a fire station, just right down the street from us. So I think maybe we are on the same grid as them. Wishful thinking, maybe that is, I don't know if there's any truth behind that. There's also a hospital pretty close by. So um, fingers crossed that we won't lose power, but you know, things happen. And so canning mixed vegetables. 
also on the agenda today. I foraged some, not many because it's still early in the season, elderberry, um, and that's been in the freezer. So I need to pick that off of its leaves and stems because elderberry leaves and stems are poisonous and do something with it. I may, it depends on how much time I have today. I may just put them in Ziploc freezer bags and put them back in the freezer until I have more. I'm gonna see how much I have because I'd really like to make some elderberry syrup that I can then turn into elderberry gummies because those are my favorite. Um, but it's cold and flu season. I have been fighting something. Maybe it's just sinuses in the weather, but regardless, um, I guess it's not really cold and flu season, but um, nothing is worse than a cold in the middle of summer. Am I right? Like it just hits different. Um, so I'm gonna pick the elderberries off the stems. It's kind of a tedious job. I don't have many, just a few. We just planted some elderberry. Here comes Rosie the vacuum. We just planted some elderberry at our house, but it's not gonna flower this year, I don't think, but it's doing awesome. So maybe I'll show that to you later, <laughs> Rosie. Um, or put a clip in of our elderberry because I'm super excited about that. Um, so anyway, and then I chopped up some jalapenos because I have a ton of jalapeno plants this year and they have started to produce, but not like a massive haul at one time. So I've been bringing them in and dicing them up and putting them on freezer trays or baking trays and putting them in the freezer. <clears throat> and then I'm going to bag those up. And once I get enough, then I'll make cowboy candy because that's my husband's, that's my absolute favorite thing to do with jalapenos. So I have a few more jalapenos to dice up and I'll show you that and stupid easy again everything I do is stupid easy because I don't like things that are complicated um and then I also have a tray in the freezer that needs to go into a bag so we'll do that and so I don't know let's go questions comments concerns all right let's see this so I'm gonna throw all of the mixed vegetables into this pot and add some water and we're gonna bring it to a boil so I told you, this is ridiculously easy. This is something that your kids could do with maybe a little supervision depending on their ages. My kids are, I have two 12 year olds, no, they're not twins. And I have a 14 year old. They could do this without any supervision, without any instruction, just, it's that easy. So, dumbing these all in. Oh. Some of the bags were open, which is kind of concerning, but I'm just going to go with it. Uh, I'm going to throw anything here. These are a really great value. I like to buy in bulk. These are also great. Like you can just throw them in the microwave. They cook in the microwave. In four to six minutes, the bag goes. So, uh, drop some. Um, so they're great value. I don't know, do you have BJ's where you are? I like BJ's, I really like Sam's Club, um, but when we moved down here to Palm Bay from Melbourne, Florida, um, we're on the Space Coast, the East Coast of Florida, Central East Coast. When we moved down here to Palm Bay last year, the Sam's Club is just too far to be, it's not really that far, it's like 30 minutes, but BJ's is like five minutes, so you know. I like EJ's. Gas is cheap. So I'm gonna fill this pot with water and put it on the stove. I'm gonna bring it to boil. I'm gonna start my canner just up to a simmer. Okay, so I got the pressure canner up on like medium and got a pot full of veggies. I'll show you this. Doop, pot full of veggies. I'm just gonna get this rocking on. I don't know, seven and a half. I can on an electric stove, always have. Not a lot of gas stoves in Florida. So I can on an electric stove, not a problem. See, don't make problems for yourself. I am a member of so many different canning groups on Facebook and I'm constantly seeing like people I can't can because I have an electric stove or I can't can because X, Y, and Z. Just can, just do it. 
You can do it. It's awesome. Easy. You'll love it. Okay, so this is getting up to a simmer. This is going. I am going to get out of my trash. I am going to make sure my jars are clean. I washed them yesterday, but I just want to make sure. That's what we're doing. Mike came in. He's getting ready to leave. Um, so we were chatting. But I washed up all the jars while Mike and I had our chat. And so that is coming to a boil. The canner is still trying to come to a steam. So I'm gonna add one teaspoon of salt. Uh, I use pickling salt. You can use Redmond's real salt, whatever. Um, not like table salt. Don't, don't just use like table salt. We use um, pink Himalayan salt as our table salt. That would be great. Um, so one teaspoon. In each jar. We're literally almost done with this project. I told you it was easy. So one, two. Oh, I prepared 10 jars. I think I'm only gonna do end up with nine, maybe less. But uh, so I'm only gonna put salt in, let's see, five, six. I'm only gonna put salt in seven jars. So if I don't end up needing these last three, then we won't use them. And then I've also got my wide mouth and regular mouth canning lids ready to go um, so that I can be easy on that. And I've got my little bubbler. Like I said, we are almost done. So while we wait for that stuff to come up, I'm gonna move the jars over by the canner and I'm gonna grab maybe jalapenos. So I will be right back. I wanted to show you, um, before I pressure can every single time, I take one of these little pipe cleaner things. Um, they came in a package like this. We've had this, I don't know, 10 years. Um, and it's still like a bit full. I think that they're for cleaning out your pipe. Um, so I take one of the pipe cleaners and I just reuse them over and over. So that's why the bag never gets empty. Take it and I feed it through, but, and then I just, you can see, they wiggle it back and forth to clean that out until I can see through it. So I, I can see through it. <laughs> that will look ridiculous. Uh, see through the little hole, then it's nice and cleaned out and we're good to go. So I wanted to show you that little, trick. So I found a project that I forgot to tell you about that we need to do. So at the same time as I foraged the elderberry, again, it wasn't a whole lot. It's not quite time yet. Another couple weeks and there'll be a lot more elderberry out here in Florida. Um, I can only speak to Florida. I don't know um, about your area, but I also got some elder flower. So <laughs> this is going to sound insane. Um, I always feel really guilty picking flowers of things that fruit, um, where you really want the fruit, especially something like elderberry that doesn't fruit that often, once or twice a year, um, typically just once here. And so I feel really guilty because if you take the flowers for something then you don't ever get the fruit or nobody else gets the fruit, I know it's insane. Um, so I just took a little elderflower because I do like to use elderflower in tinctures and teas um, and different things for immune boosting. So I'm just gonna, I dried it um, on a cookie tray uh, or a jelly roll pan. And then I put a little cookie cooling rack on it. And I'm just gonna, it, I dried it for like, I don't know, two weeks. Um, I, it could have been like two days. Yeah, it would have been totally dry. I could have done it in a dehydrator. Um, but I just set it and I set it off on a table and I forgot about it until I had time to work with it. So I'm literally just, again, the stems, they're poisonous. Um, so you, you don't want those. Um, so just the flower, um, which can be, again, elderberry can be kind of tedious to work with, um, but it's so worth it. It's, it's so good, right? It's so good for you. Um, 
grows wild. I mean, I'm sure you've seen it. Uh, once you know, once you've seen it, like you can't not see it everywhere you go. Um, when we were driving through Tennessee, uh, Mike was like, oh, there's more elderberry. Oh, there's more elderberry. Literally everywhere. Um, also, oh my gosh. So when we were in Tennessee, oh, well, here's what we did. So we went to, I don't know if you know already. Um, we went to Gatlinburg. We stayed at our timeshare in Gatlinburg. I have been to Gatlinburg, but I mean, I like I was in high school. The last time I went, maybe younger. I'm not really sure. I'd have to ask my mom. Um, so my husband's never been, and my kids have never been to the mountains. My husband's been to the, Mike's been to the mountains, but he had never been to Gatlinburg. And I love to hike. It's that's how I get my exercise. Um, so fun fact, if like that word scares you. Um, because the word hiking used to scare me. Um, hiking is just walking outdoors. I know, right? So you too can hike and it's not really cool. Um, but so, however, that being said, hiking is just out, uh, walking outdoors. That is true. However, um, we went to our whole our whole reason for going to Gatlinburg, or our main reason for going to Gatlinburg, um, besides it just being summer vacation, is we wanted to like, hike the Great Smoky Mountains. So we did, oh my God, did we? Um, so we did some really easy hikes, but then we did two pretty strenuous hikes, like one especially, and uh, me being always the overzealous, chose to do um, the biggest hike of the whole week on our first day in the Smokies. And someone's at my door. It was just FedEx. Okay, so I was telling you, check out my stuff on the stove. Um, so I'm always kind of overzealous. So I ch we chose to, or I chose, cause I, I mean, who are we kidding? Like I make the plans. Um, and my husband's so amazing. He just goes along with my plans always. Um, so that's really awesome. But so I chose to, for us to go do our biggest hike on our first day, and uh, which was our second day in Gatlinburg, but our, or kind of our second and a half day, because we got in, it's like a 10 and a half hour drive if you drive straight through. Well, it took us 14 hours. Um, so we got in at like eight o'clock at night. And then the first full day there, we just did like some touristy stuff. Um, and then, so our second full day in Gatlinburg is when we did our first really big hike. And we we drove the Cades Cove loop because that came, became, I can't talk, I'm so excited. I wanna go back like yesterday. So we drove the Cades Cove Loop because that was highly suggested um, by everyone that we talked to when we told them we were going to Gatlinburg and in all the guidebooks and stuff. And like we really wanted to see black bears, which is you know what everyone wants to see when they go to Tennessee, right? Um, so the Cades Cove Loop, like you can just drive it and it's amazing. You, it's just the there's all these little pull-offs and my hair is wild today, so whether. Um, there's all these little pull-offs and these just magnificent, magnificent views. Like if you haven't been to the mountains, if you're somewhere where it is flat um, or somewhere like Florida, like obviously we have amazing views here in Florida, but it is not the same. Uh, I'm sure all of you that are in the mountains, like you're like, yeah, whatever, you get jaded by it. But I'm telling you, man, like that view never gets old. Um, I say that here in Florida, like I grew up in Illinois and I've been in Florida almost 10 years now. And, um, every single time I drive over our causeways to go beachside, um, I say out loud, man, this view never gets old. Right. Cause it's just spectacular. Like what God has put on this earth and then like what we have done with it. Um, it's just amazing, but I digress. So we started driving Cades Cove and um, 
just absolutely stunning. We kept stopping. Like, we really took our time. There's all these, like, little houses and churches that are original that you can stop at. And um, so we stopped at all of those. And um, we saw a deer. We didn't see black bears at first. Um, we saw a deer and tons of flowers and just, I mean, it was beautiful. And we really took our time. We really went slow. And then about halfway through the loop, let me check on my stuff real quick. We are getting super close. Um, about halfway through the loop, you get to a stop for the Laurel Falls trailhead, okay? So that is what we were doing. So we stopped at Kate's Cove, uh, or we stopped at the Laurels Falls Trailhead, and then we parked, and there's like a nice size parking lot, and there's um, some very disgusting bathrooms, but use the bathroom, because um, then it was um, about a four hour hike, round trip, not one way, but it's not a loop, so you go in the same way you come back. Um, and, Oh, let me tell you what, like that tested our spirits for sure. Um, but I am relieved to say we all made it out the other side. And um, so there's five of us, right? So my husband, Mike, and myself, which if you don't know me, my name is Catherine, and uh, my three girls, we all hiked it. It was hard. It was hard. It was gorgeous. Um, and we came out the other side and we were okay. Like nobody was dead. Chloe tripped and she hurt her ankle a little bit, but she was okay. And um, my husband got a little dehydrated, but he was okay. Um, so much so that a few days later, we did another giant hike. Um, not quite as strenuous as the Laurel Falls trailhead um but still like and I kind of feel like if my family uh, hadn't enjoyed it right hadn't felt the adrenaline the power um that came with finishing a, a hard hike which I mean okay so if you're like a hiker if this is what you do then obviously you're not gonna think Laurel, Laurel Falls was a hard hike. But um, it's like five, a little over five miles round trip. And it took about four hours for us round trip. Uh, we did stop for lunch at the falls. Um, and um, we did take our time getting to the falls. We stopped quite a bit. Mike um, tried to fish for some rainbow trout. Um, so that was fun. Like we took our time. We, we booked it back though. Like we were ready to get back to the car. We were hungry, we were tired. Um, but so like, if you were like a hiker hiker, then this is nothing. Like this will be nothing for you. But for us who um, our definition of hiking is walking in the woods, like th this was strenuous, like this tested us. Um, and so it was amazing. What an experience to have like an accomplishment with your family like that. Like, oh, it just, I could cry just thinking about it. Like, it makes me very emotional. Um, so this is how much we've got so far. <laughs> While we've been chatting, so not a lot. Um, but, and still a lot to do, but whatever. Let's press pause on the elderflower and work on um, canning up our goodies because it's boiling. So I'm gonna bring you over closer. Okay, I apologize in advance if at any point in time you like cannot see what I'm doing. Um, but this is my first cooking video. So if you have any pointers, like leave them down below and I will definitely take those, take that under advisement. So I'm gonna turn off my vegetables which are boiling and grab the, a slotted spoon and a ladle. And I've got my jars ready to go with the salt. I've got a little bit of vinegar in a little container. See? Just not a measurement. Got a little napkin 
uh, cotton napkin at vinegar. I just refill this. I buy the big giant jugs and I keep them in my pantry and I just refill this bottle and keep it up there so that it's handy. Um, and then I've got my lids and my bubbler. So all my stuff is ready. And we're just gonna fill these jars like super fast, as fast as we can. Um, so slotted spoon to the jar. Maybe I'll just bring you like real close in. What do you think? How's that feel? Does that feel better? Maybe not. My arm in the way? Okay. So slotted spoon, filling the jar, leaving a one inch headspace. So that is, I'll show you when we get there, right to the neck. Here, right here, it's the neck. Um, kind of packing it in there a little bit, not too much. You want it to be loose. We're gonna fill all the jars and then we're gonna top them with the water that the vegetables have been coming to a boil with in. It's okay, see, I don't overthink it. I just do it. I don't need two of those. Let's see. One. Ooh, I think we're gonna need all ten jars. Let's see. Overboard green bean. I think the biggest reservation that people have with canning, especially pressure canning, um, is overthinking it. Like just don't don't overthink it. When you go to open your your canned food items that you've prepared. If there's like mold growing on them or they smell funny, throw them out, okay? Like that's, I have never, ever had an issue. I've never, I've never opened a can, except for maybe like in a ferment. Um, I have had ferments go bad. Oh, maybe we don't need all 10 jars. Um, I've, I've had ferments go bad. Um, but I've never had something that I've, water bath can or something that I pressure canned um, not be good. So don't overthink it. Like, just go for it. Um, yeah, we are, I think, going to be at six jars. Let's see. And so helpful tip, I don't follow this, uh, but helpful tip, if, when you do things like this that don't really have a recipe, don't really have a procedure, um, it would be helpful to write down, like say, hey, one of these bags from of mixed vegetables from BJ's fills however many pint jars. I don't think I said that, these are pint jars. Um, but of course, I've done this before and I don't write things down, so I just have to wing it each time. And you know what? That's what works for me and that's okay. So I'm just gonna finish filling this and then I'm on jar number seven, so we'll see. I might have enough. Ladling it in up to the neck for your one inch head space. And then we're just gonna wipe the rims and, well, debubble, and then wipe the rims. Throw them in the canner. Good to go. So I told you, like really, easy and it didn't take any skill at all barely took any time the, the biggest amount of time was bringing the vegetables to a boil in which you, you know you don't need to be part of that that you can do something else you can watch tv you can chat with your spouse or your kids right so this would be an amazing project for your kids to do um, because it's just so easy and we're getting it out of the freezer and onto the shelf so that anybody can open up a jar and oops too much open up a jar and have the base for a meal or soup oh my gosh so perfect for chicken soup right like just throw this with a jar of chicken and a jar of chick homemade chicken stock and you have chicken soup like you're done Ooh, or you can add like a little garlic powder or fresh garlic you can add a little grated ginger right turmeric for those extra benefits like you're done um so uh, i don't we don't eat these as sides as much as 
I use them um, in meals. So like in recipes. Oh my gosh, I have way more than I thought I did. All right, so I think we're gonna be on eight cans. Let's see. And then you'll know, and you can write it down, and I can look back at this video next time, and I'll know how many jars to prepare. Oops. Well, that went overboard. All right. I've made a mess, guys, which is pretty typical. Okay, so I just tried to show you what, how much vegetables was left in the pot. And I dumped the pot onto the floor. So I've got it cleaned up now. I have a little bit of vegetables left in the pot. I'm going to put in the jars. Then I'll bring you back when I seal them up. <laughs> because apparently I cannot be trusted making a cooking video. <laughs> I just want you in here with me where you can see everything. Cleaned up, finished. Uh, it ended up making eight jars and plus this, which I can't can. I'm just going to pop a lid on it and throw it in the fridge and then we'll eat it tonight um, with dinner. So, and if we don't, it'll go to the chickens. So that's easy. So I'm going to show you lastly what I do. So I'm taking my little cloth napkin and the vinegar. Oh, no, just kidding. So I'm taking my bubbler and I'm just going to go around the edges of each jar and then I will take the cloth napkin and wipe the edges with the vinegar just to make sure there's no like little sticky bits or anything that would keep it from sealing. I think we're good here. Wiping my rims down. Just like, again, don't overthink it. Over, you know, like be a little bit more careful when you're doing something like jam or pie filling that has this very sticky and like you get it all over the rims, but this was just salt and water and vegetables. So it's probably fine, but I don't ever skip a step. And then I'm just gonna throw my lid on, finger tight. So tighten it till it's tight and then come in and give it one more tight, one more turn. So that's how I was taught. Good, right? Tighten it till it's tight and then one more. It doesn't matter if you're using wide mouth or uh, regular mouth jars for this, it doesn't matter at all. I actually prefer wide mouth because they're easier to get the vegetables out later. Um, but I used what I had in the kitchen so that I didn't have to go out to can storage. This is it. You're in there. It's actually perfect. Eight fit perfectly. I mean, I could have squeezed one more in there. Um, I just have the Presto, like, cheapy 16-quart um, canner. I'm wanting to get another one. It's been in my Amazon cart, so we'll see. I might get another one that's taller. Um, but, yeah, don't overthink it. So, I'm going to pop the lid on this, and we're good to go. And this is going to come up to pressure. I just replaced my seals, and so really hard to get that on there. This is going to come up to pressure. Once it does, it steams. I'm going to start a timer for 10 minutes and let it steam. And I will bring you back so you can see that. And we're going to can it for 75 minutes. But I will bring you back here in just a little bit and show you the next step. This is just going to sit here on, I've got it on temperature 8, which is, I guess, medium high. And uh, we'll go from there. See you soon. Hey, okay, so I told you I'd bring you back. It's been about 15 minutes. <clears throat> and the, it's steaming. So it looks like this. I just started my 10 minute timer and the little top thing has popped up. So it's come to pressure. I will go 10 minutes and then I will add on my little bobble weight. Okay, if you have a different type of canner, then 
just wouldn't be what you do. So just follow the instructions in your canner manual. But I am 10 pounds pressure because I'm 16 uh, feet above sea level. So I'm gonna 10 pressure and I'm gonna pop that on there and uh, I'll bring you back when I do that. Okay, so my timer hasn't gone off yet, um, but I just ran outside and watered the chickens um, and checked on the baby chicks, which we have on our patio. And I thought I would continue telling you about hiking while I continue working on this um, elderflower, which um, it's times like these when I like regret wanting them because it is so tedious to pick these off. So um, we hiked at um, Abrams Falls and that was absolutely wonderful. And then we finished the Cades Cove Loop um, and we did get to see, well, okay, the Cades Cove Loop, let me just tell you, if you were planning on doing that, first of all, get there super early in the morning. We got there uh, to start Cades Cove at like, I wanna say eight. Um, my goal had been to get there at 6.30. That didn't happen because I don't think my family understood when I said like we needed to get places early um, that I was serious and why. Um, so the rest of the week when I said we need to leave early, we did. Um, and they were like totally on board then. Um, but we, we didn't get there till eight. So by the time we finished the uh, Laurel Falls hike, which I told you took about four hours, um, we continued on the Cades Cove loop because it's a loop and you have to go all the way around. Um, traffic was so insane. So most people, I guess, just drive the loop. And every time there's like a black bear sighting or whatever, people just stop in the middle of the road and you can't go around them. Um, so you're just stuck because it's one way traffic and you're just stuck. Um, so it takes a really long time. And the later it gets, the more people there are, right? So we were stuck. And so the, the second half of the Cades Cove loop took like, I don't even know, I don't remember. Three more, four more hours. It was, I might be exaggerating. It might've been like two hours, but it was a very long time. Okay, so get there super early and like just settle in, make sure you have snacks, make sure you have drinks. Um, we brought an ice chest with us and like packed our lunches and packed tons of snacks in the car um, so that we would have things to do. Um, oh, I will leave a link below of this amazing app. It was like 20 bucks, um, but I tell you what, it is worth it. Um, it's called Just Ahead and it, I didn't have it for the... Alexa, stop. The timer's done, so put a pin in that. All right, so we're literally just going to take our take our little bobbler that I showed you and whoo, pop it right on top. Can you see that? Um, and then when it starts bobbling, we'll start our timer. We're gonna can it for 75 minutes um, for pint jars. And it, if you're doing quarts, you can for 90 minutes. Um, so when that starts bobbling, we'll start another timer. Um, so keep an eye on it for me, okay? Um, so where was I at? Oh, the Just Ahead app. So I didn't have it for Cade's Cove Loop, and I really wish I had, um, but I did download it for our next big hiking day, which was two days later. Um, so basically what it does is it works off GPS satellite, and it tells you like helpful things based on your location inside of the national parks. And so it'll say like, just ahead on your left, blah, 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 like you have a tour guide. Um, and so one, it let us know like before we got there, what we were about to see and it gave us a little history on it, gave us some like pointers on um, taking pictures or, or whatever. So. Oh my gosh, when we had that the next day or the next time we went into the parks, amazing. Like we really wish we'd had it. Um, so I highly, highly, highly suggest that. Your cell phones do not work inside of the park. Um, uh, when we went to Klingsman Dome, which I'll tell you about maybe, 
Um, if I have time, um, if you care, um, if not fast forward, but when we went to Klingsman Dome, our phones did work because we were really, really, really high up, right? Cause that's like the highest, most point, um, in the park, but, um, the Cades Cove loop day, our phones did not work at all. And so you don't have like, your maps, you don't have Google, um, which I thought was really awesome because personally I help, I hate cell phones. Um, I use mine constantly. Um, so that's not what I'm saying. Uh, I think they're a necessary evil, but I love times when we can just totally unplug and my kids can unplug and just be, we can just be together. Um, so you won't be able to Google things. So on the Cades Cove loop, I did have my guidebook and my little guidebook about the loop that I purchased from the Sugarlands, whoops, lost some, Sugarlands Visitor Center, uh, which you will stop at, I'm sure, if you go. Um, and so I had my little guidebooks and so I was reading about the different houses and stuff, but seriously, that just, when you're reading out of a guidebook, especially like two other people, then you're not looking out the window. So you're missing so much. Um, so the just ahead, I mean, come on, that was awesome. Kudos to whoever invented that. Um, so we finished the Case Cove Loop. We did get to see, uh, very off in the distance, a mama, black bear, and um, two baby cubs. So that was incredibly awesome. Um, so I highly suggest going. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm jokingly trying to talk my husband into moving to Tennessee. He says, no, our life is here in Florida. But uh, he did say I could buy a cabin if I save up enough money. So <laughs> here's to goals, right? Um, so what else? Tediously doing this. Um, so the following day after we did the Laurels Falls waterfall trail, we went to Ober Gatlinburg, O-B-E-R, or Ober Mountain Gatlinburg, O-B-E-R, Mountain. And uh, my parents actually um, are such a blessing and they gifted us tickets to Ober Gatlinburg. So we spent the following day there and wow, that's such a cool place. Um, when we first got there, we thought, okay, tickets were $50 a person and there's not enough here to warrant $50 a person for tickets. We were wrong, okay? I like to inform you, I'm proud to inform you that there is absolutely enough to do there to spend an entire day. Um, but I do have a couple tips. So I'm planning on writing a blog post, but you know, um, if you wanna make God laugh, tell him your plans. Um, but so here, you get my helpful tips. All right, so to get to Ober Gatlinburg, you can either drive up the mountain and park at Ober Gatlinburg, or, which is what we did, we did the or, you can park in downtown Gatlinburg and take this tram. So the, the $50, uh, $49 a person um, tickets give you all day access to, to do as much of the stuff that you wanna do as you want. So you can do it as many times as you want. Again, I suggest getting there really early when they open um, because the lines do get long um, and they're open year round. So we went in June and they have all their summertime stuff. I think I hear our thing bobbling. So let's take a look. Yep, okay, I'm gonna bring you in close. Okay, can you see it starting to shake? So I'm gonna start my timer. Alexa, start a 75 minute timer. And I'm gonna turn the heat down to about four and a half. Uh, if you have a gas range, then adjust accordingly. Uh, four and a half is just below medium on my stove. And I'm gonna keep an eye on this. And if it starts to go crazy, I'm gonna turn the temperature down even more. 
Okay, you don't want it to stop bobbling, but you don't want it to be like crazy, right? Okay, so um, this is a little fast for my liking, but I just turned the temperature down. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of time and see, and then I'll just adjust as necessary. Okay, I'm gonna try to talk a little bit louder because the canner is loud. Um, so, over Gatlinburg. So, um, we park now across the street, if you look it up, over Mountain, over Gatlinburg, has a parking lot that you can park in. It's like $15, um, maybe 20, I don't remember. Um, so go to their parking lot, but then here's tip number one, right? So write this down. Um, right across the street from the over Gatlinburg, over Mountain, whatever it's called, uh, parking lot is a little ho uh, motel type thing. And they, you can just, pull up to the motel and run into the front desk. They offer, or they did when we went, parking in their lot for $10 a day. And you have until 6 p.m. So that is tip number one. Um, save yourself a little money because Gatlinburg is um, kind of pricey because it's a touristy place, right? So anytime you can save five bucks or whatever, um, you know, five bucks will get you a uh, tasting at the distillery. So I'd rather have a tasting at the distillery than pay $5 more for a parking spot than I have to, right? So uh, that's tip number one. So you park and then you walk down, it's like two blocks um, to over Gatlinburg, you go inside, you give them your tickets, they give you a wristband. And um, here's tip number two. Up is actually tip number two and three combined. Once you get on the tram, the tram takes about, I don't know, 15, 10 to 15 minutes to get. It takes you, so it like pack them in like sardines, right? It fits a hundred some odd people in this tram and it's got glass windows all the way around. It takes you up the mountain and you have this spectacular panoramic views. Um, but like it takes a little while to get up there. So once you're up there, yes, there's a restaurant and there's like a snack bar and a little ice cream thing and there's some vending machines. Okay, but here's tip number two and three combined. And again, you know, we're all about budgeting correctly and using our money wisely. So the food and the drinks and the vending machines are crazy expensive. So, <clears throat> and like not that great, right? So tip number one, um, tip number two, if you're going to buy sodas or water bottles out of the vending machine, then the vending machine by the ticket desk when you first walk into Ober Gatlinburg before you get on the tram, the drinks are $2. It does take debit cards and it takes cash and they're $2, okay? Once you get up to the top of the mountain, <clears throat> they have captured you. So the vending machines are $4. $4 for a bottle of water, $4 for um, a tea. The vending machines do not have soda. So you have to get a soda from the snack counter. So it's a cup with ice and a lid, also $4. But you have even less drink because it's ice with a lid, right? than in a like a 20 ounce soda bottle or whatever um so ah and then the food not amazing and expensive so here is what you should do instead they have lockers that you can rent for a dollar okay they're only one use so like you pay a dollar if you have to open it again you have to pay another dollar but <clears throat> you're allowed to bring your own food and beverages so i highly suggest you bringing a big soft-sided cooler. I really wish we had done this. A big soft-sided cooler, pack your lunches, like some Lunchables or homemade Lunchables or whatever, the sky's the limit, right? Pasta salad, get creative, and, um, and bring your own water bottles and pack your lunch, put it in a locker when you get there. And then at lunchtime, um, go get your, your stuff, sit down, find they have picnic tables and rocking chairs and all different kinds of places to sit. Sit down, eat your food, 
that you brought from home um, and then pay another dollar, put your cooler back into your locker and then grab it before you leave. So that is my big honkin' save you some money tips one, two, and three um, for over Gatlinburg. Um, wear sunscreen, it is outside. Um, if you're gonna do the mountain alpine coaster, hands down that was our favorite thing there. Definitely do that very first thing because we wanted to do it a second time and the line was like ridiculous, like maybe two hours. So that is not in the cards for us. Um, so we were only able to ride that once. Um, so those are my tips for over Gatlinburg. Also, wait, here's a freebie, okay? Um, the last day of our trip, we stopped in this, I think it was called Tennessee Cider House because they had free hard cider tastings. And sitting on the bar at Tennessee Cider House were coupons for $10 off of each ticket at Ober Gatlinburg. So I don't know, maybe you should check that out um, first. So I love a good coupon. And I had looked for coupons for Ober Gatlinburg and they do have $2 off coupons for just riding the tram because I guess a lot of people just ride the tram and it's like $23 or something. Um, but those coupons did not work for the all day passes for $49. Um, so maybe check out and see if you can't find that $10 coupon. I was disappointed that we couldn't. So um, those are my tips for over Gatlinburg. If you go there, this project is never going to end. Um, so we're here now. And we still have that to do. So again, I told you I get a little ambitious with my projects. Um, so I'm not going to make you continue to watch me do this. Um, so I will bring you back when I pull the cans out of the canner. Um, or if I do a project besides the elderberry uh, or elderflower, um, I might have to take a break on this elderflower because it's getting very monotonous. Um, and I'm all from there. Okay, I'll see you soon. Hey, hey, so I am back. The canner timer went off about 10 minutes ago and the canner just came down in pressure. So I told you I pulled that them out of the canner with you. Um, I'm just gonna pull them out. I am putting them on this, um, it's like a dishwashing drying mat. I buy these at the Dollar Tree. If you have seen any of the craft videos on my channel, um, then you know how much I love the Dollar Tree. But, oh, oh, that reminds me. If you wouldn't mind subscribing to my channel, hitting the little thumbs up button, hitting the little, little bell thing, to get notified, that really does help my channel and I would so, so appreciate it. Uh, plus it knows me, it lets me know that you're here. Um, so that makes me feel special. And I love comments down below, like tell me where you're from, tell me what's up, tell me if this video was ridiculous and how much you hated it, that's fine too. Um, so I'm just gonna pull the mixed veg out of the, the canner. I'm gonna set them here and then let them cool for, uh, till tomorrow morning. Then I'll put them away. So let's see what we've got. I told you earlier that I just replaced the um, seals on my canner lid. So I replaced um, this seal right here and this little thing here. I bought them at Ace Hardware. You can also get them on Amazon or whatever. Like they're not very expensive. 20 bucks, maybe less. So um, you should replace those like every year or two, um, 18 months. Or so just to make sure that your can is always getting a good seal um, so and then I just literally you're just pulling them out so how good do those look they look so good and they're still going to sizzle and pop and that's okay and then tomorrow morning I will take the rings off because you never want to store your canned goods with the rings on and I will label them up because even though you can see what's in the jar I don't know I label everything anyway with the contents and the date I'm going to grab another drying rack 
Okay, see, I told you I have a ton of these. Um, so I label them up with the date contents and the date, remove the bands, and then I put them in my pantry. And we've got mixed vegetables that aren't gonna go bad if the power goes out. So how super easy was that, right? Great. So yay! Thanks for coming along. I thank you. I uh, didn't get any other projects done today, but that's okay. This video ran super over, um, so I didn't get to show you any of the other things I did. But again, if you like this channel, please like, heart, subscribe, do all the things, and uh, I'll see you next time.